Coming up on Animal Outtakes, go big or go home. Males you're going to see anywhere uh, between 14,000 pounds and 16,000 pounds. Uh, females are going to be right around 8,000 pounds. We're learning all about elephants today and why their future depends on us. Plus, one, two, three. We're taking a tour of a new home for dogs that promises the best care for their lifetime. Hello everyone and welcome back to a huge episode of Animal Outtakes. And I mean this time we're going big. How big, Marsha? Really big. What's funny about that? When I say how big, you're supposed to say something funny. Okay, so big that the show is about elephants. I don't get it. That's because it's no joke. Today we'll be learning all about the largest land mammals on the planet. What? are you eating? Hmm? Oh, it's an elephant's ear. Put that down. What's the matter with you? It's not an actual elephant's ear. It's a donut type thing. Well, where did you get that anyway? You know, from when we did the show at the fair. Last year? It's still good. Remember, an elephant never goes bad. An elephant never forgets. Forgets what? Forget it. Where's Bud? Oh, <laughs> he'll be here. He's getting into costume. Here I am. Sorry I'm late, Masha, but look at this great peanut costume Lou gave me. You're trying to get an elephant to eat Bud? Yeah. I should have known something was up when you also gave me that peanut cologne, which I love, by the way. Oh, I was just doing a little scientific test, that's well, all. Well, the joke's on you, because that's just a myth. Elephants don't like peanuts. What? And I was up all night making that costume. You made this? It's really quite good. <laughs> Thanks. Would you two please get back on the topic? Oh, that's right. Elephants. Yes, and we'll learn all about what life is like for these enormous animals and how they have become part of our lives as well. Oh, man. Is that elephant ear on the ground from the fair last year? There's a lot to see, so let's get started. So this is our habitat here at the zoo. It's about uh, three and a half acres. Uh, again, the herd is on the far side of the yard right now. Uh, the, the babies are actually wallowing in the mud. On this hot summer day, the elephants at Tampa's Lowry Park Zoo are doing what they can to keep cool. But these humongous mammals do have a unique way to beat the heat. So on the back side of the elephants here, there's a lot of uh, circulation. So. Imagine those elephants have two big radiators strapped to the side of their head. What they do is they pump that warm blood from their body and then they'll flap them out in the, uh, in the air and help relieve some of that heat and send the cooler air back to their body. Mike Burns is the animal care supervisor for this herd of African elephants. In all, there are six living at the zoo. One male, a bull, three adult females, called cows, and two young calves, both girls. How does the zoo go about getting these animals to bring them here? Right, that's, a, that's a great question. So uh, these animals are typically managed in uh, game parks in southern, or in southern Africa. Uh, what happens is the populations in the park grow to the point where the natural resources of the park can no longer sustain the animals. And then they're put into what's called a cull, so they'll remove uh, certain individuals from the population. And we're just fortunate enough to get uh, a few of them here. How do they acclimate themselves? Is it an easy fix? It is a very easy fix actually. The, the climate we have here in Florida is very similar to that of uh, Southern Africa. So it's a very easy transition. Um, it's great. It's easy to manage elephants here because uh, we can allow them to have access uh, in their barn and uh, to their yard uh, throughout the entire year. We're very fortunate that uh, Mavi and Mpumi were both uh, females because this will be the foundation of our herd going here forward. So they will stay here with their mothers uh, for their entirety. The herds are going to be comprised of um, mostly females and uh, they're all going to be family herds. So you're going to see moms living with aunts and sisters and daughters and uh, males are going to join the herd but eventually they, uh, they will leave and form bachelor herds. Now the gestation period for a female elephant is two years? Yes, it's roughly 22 to 24 months. It's Phew. quite some time. Yeah, it's quite the investment <laughs> on the, the mother's behalf. Absolutely. Sure. One of the um, 
most wonderful, heartwarming sights that we just saw was the calf nursing from his mother. How long do they do this? So they'll nurse for up to four years generally, oh. uh, and sometimes even longer than that, uh, because it's going to take about four years uh, in order for, or for the mother to uh, give birth again. Now, does mom take care of baby the whole time, or does she turn and walk away at some point? So something that's interesting about elephants is uh, they will raise calves together as a herd. So you will see um, the two different calves nursing off of both the mothers. And uh, even our elephant, who is not pregnant right now, will also allow the calves to, to nurse off of her. So what is the average weight of the calves and which is the average weight of the adults? So when the calves are born, they're uh, anywhere from about 200 to 250 pounds, ideally. Um, and as they continue to grow uh, and reach adult size, males you're gonna see anywhere uh, between 14,000 pounds and 16,000 pounds. Uh, females are gonna be right around 8,000 pounds. The fact that the calves were born here in captivity, we hear a lot of stories. Uh, they shouldn't be, they should be. What are your views on keeping these animals in captivity and also having the offspring born here? Yes, it's another great question. The, uh, when you look at these animals out here, um, the whole point of having these animals here is that they act as ambassadors for their wild counterparts. So the hope is that uh, children much like these will come to the zoo and uh, connect with these animals and uh, be brought aware to some of the uh, issues plaguing these animals. Now, uh, for me personally, it's very important to uh, the conservation of the species and the well-being of the species. Um, they're all enrolled in what's called an SSP, or a Species Survival Plan, and we'll get different breeding recommendations that uh, increase the genetic diversity of the managed population here in North America. What would be an average day's menu for, an average the, for the adult elephant? So an, an adult elephant is going to consume about 3 to 5 percent of its body weight, uh, which means we're putting a couple hundred pounds of hay out there uh, for these elephants every day. Now the majority of their diet is going to be a, a coastal or tifton hay. Uh, that's what they're eating out there right now. It's like a golder, uh, golden colored hay. We also supplement them with alfalfa and about as much produce as they want. So uh, for all their training sessions, they're going to get um, apples and carrots. And then uh, they'll also get supplemental produce, things like melons and uh, broccoli, green peppers, so romaine the vegetarians, lettuce. Oh, yes, yes. They're big vegetarians, and that's what happens when you're a vegetarian. Right, right, <laughs> right. So they have to eat so much because uh, they have really poor uh, and inefficient uh, digestive systems. So they have to consume so much in order to uh, make up for that. And still ahead on animal outtakes. No, not yet. Come on, no, sweetheart. All right, oh. right here. Come here. Right, give her a kiss. Oh, he's <laughs> in love with me. We're getting up close and personal with a very special herd of elephants. You won't want to miss it. And later, we're taking you sky high on a tour of Dante's Den, a new innovative community for dogs. For thousands of years, we've been humans' best friend. You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. There are two different species of elephants, African elephants and Asian elephants. While at first they look the same, there are some key differences in their features. African elephants, like the ones at Lowry Park Zoo, have larger ears that help them beat the heat of Africa. Asian elephants' ears are smaller, since they are native to the cooler jungle areas. Asian elephants also have a smaller head with two domes compared to the African elephant, which has a single dome. 
And then there are the tusks. All African elephants have tusks, regardless of sex. But that's not the case with the Asian species. Only males grow tusks. But even then, not every male will have them. You can also tell these two apart by the feel of their trunk, the wrinkles in their skin, or even the number of toenails they have. Nestled amongst the rolling hills of the nature coast, there's an exotic animal refuge that boasts a big attraction. Elephants. And you can <laughs> hand them right to her. Come here. Yeah? What's she going to grab it right it with? in the end of her nose there? Right here? There we go. Patricia Zerbini and her late husband founded Two Tails Ranch in 1984, offering both Asian and African elephants a place to stay for short or longer periods of time. How is their lifespan? How, how, how old can they get? It's always been said that they average pretty much parallel a human lifespan. Uh, my elephants here at the ranch have been averaging 70 to 75. The oldest one I had here was 82. Um, zoos will tell you 40 to 43. That's pretty much what you, when you look it up on the internet. In the wild right now, they're averaging 18 to 22. Um, so it's, and, and that's mainly because of land loss, poaching, disease, and so on and so forth. Right now, there are four Asian elephants at the ranch, including Luke, a 30-year-old male who has lived his entire life in captivity, and Roxy, a 46-year-old female with a penchant for watermelon. And there okay. goes the Jimmy Fallon show right there. <laughs> that was her big trick on the Jimmy Fallon show. What is a daily routine for these wonderful elephants? For children? them, they, we go in the morning, they get breakfast, they get a drink of water, they get cleaned up, they get a bath, they come out, they eat some more, <laughs> and they basically hang out throughout the day. So some days we go out and graze, some days we go to the woods, some days they just stay here, and then one day a week they usually will stay in and they get a full scrub down bath with all the, the proper oils based soaps and stuff for their skin to stay in good condition, and that gives us a chance on the outside to do all the maintenance and fill in all the holes that they dig up all week long. All right, right here, come here. Uh, give her a kiss. Oh, he's in <laughs> love with me. <laughs> Patricia says they're always looking for ways to keep these magnificent animals entertained. Elephants are so intelligent that you really can't routine them. You have to do something different constantly. They get very bored they with the change. same thing. Oh, and they're intelligent, so you have to give them things to do. And, you know, we... I will make them pick up all the balls and toys and stuff in the yards. We go out, if I have a tree that's coming down, I will let them go out there and knock it down and make them drag it back. And it just gives them something to do. They have a, a purpose, basically. They need it, a job. Sometimes that job requires leaving the ranch. And Patricia says her elephants enjoy hitting the road. They do like, like most of us, every once in a while, they like to go places they like to do. So we do off-site events. It's kind of like when you have a dog that sees you get in the car and where are we going now? They when get I excited. When I bring the transporter around the front, you can see them all light up like, who's getting to go where? Someone's getting to go somewhere. And so they do enjoy it, but for the most part, they just, they like to eat and just play in the dirt and just lay back and relax. Patricia is concerned for her favorite animals, though. Some estimates show that unless something changes, the elephant could be extinct in our lifetime. What is the real concern about keeping these wonderful creatures with us? Is it the poaching, because that's what we hear about? It, the poaching is a big factor. The main factor is, is there's no land left for these animals. Um, throughout Asia, the human population has taken over. There are some preserves set aside, but there is basically no true wild left for them. Even on where they are, um, they're managed. Um, and so the, the land loss um, throughout Asia and Africa is the biggest factor for elephants um, in general. And I just, I find it very heartbreaking that the majority of the population doesn't truly understand what they're facing in the world, um, not just in captivity, or in, but as a whole. And it just breaks my heart to think that in, in 10, 15 years, no one will get to see them. 
that they, they will be extinct and that there will be nothing that we can do about it. In honor of Elephant Appreciation Day, join Roxy, Luke, and the other elephants at Two Tails Ranch in Williston, Florida on Saturday, September 20th. There will be animal talks and demonstrations as well as live music, food, and much more. Admission is $10. For more information or to learn more about the elephants and other animals at Two Tails Ranch, visit allabouteelephants.com. Construction is underway for a new facility innovative in its design, creative in its approach, and possibly just the best place to be a dog. We'll take you on a tour of Dante's Den, next. Well, it's that time again. Time for the second annual Top Dog Competition. Yay! What is that? Top Dog is the area's premier dog lovers event. Featuring categories like Best Dress. I can do that. Best Hair. Maybe not my thing. And Best Kisser. Don't even think about it. At the Sarasota Municipal Auditorium on Saturday, October 18th. Hosted by Bob Harrigan. From ABC7. All proceeds benefit Dante's Den. For more information, go to dantesden.org slash topdog. And now, here's Bud and Lou. Lou, I think it's time to talk about the elephant in the room. Ugh, oh, you mean the fact that I didn't get you a birthday present this year? Well, I was talking about this one. But never mind, yeah, what about that birthday present? Yeah, why is there an elephant in the room? I don't know, nobody wants to talk about it. Say, can we change the channel for a while? Oh, well, well, I'm talking about it. How'd you get in here anyway? I don't know, I'm just a metaphor, I guess. Is there anything to drink? Aw, oh, it's thirsty. It's, my name is Kevin. Well, no, Kevin, we don't have anything to drink. I'm not about to sit here and watch you drink with your nose. I don't drink with my nose. What do you think, it's a straw? Do you even know what that would do to my sinuses? Then how do you drink? Well, I suck water partway up my trunk, and then I squirt it into my mouth. Ugh, elephant boogies. Lou, you're being really rude to your guest. Man, I never thought of that. He's not my guest. Come on, help me get him out of here. No way. I still remember how much we bickered trying to get the couch in here. Well, you are ruining my door jam. I don't think I can say for sure that I'd ruin the door jam. And now I have to go pot. Where's your party? Outside. That's definitely outside. But we don't know how to get me outside, remember? Don't you have a elephant litter box or something? Bud, I am going to pin you to a piece of styrofoam in a minute. <laughs> what are you doing? A fly flew up my nose. A fly flew up your nose, so you whacked me in the head? Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, he's out. Man, that was a big metaphor. Oh, fine. Here's your birthday present. There's a lot of amazing pets out there, so now it's time for Pet Spotlight. Hi, my name is Brandy Freeling. 
and I want you to meet my big baby, Noah. <coughs> Noah's seven and a half. He's a big dog. Noah loves to eat, loves cottage cheese. Uh, probably one of his favorite, loves pumpkin. Not what I would call an overly active dog. <laughs> he chases the bunnies, chases the pigeons, we feed the birds. At night is when he loves it, when it cools down. That's when we play. Uh, he'll chase the ball, chase the football, loves to kill soccer balls. He loves to be with me. <laughs> they call him Mama's dog. I actually kicked him out of the bedroom because when he moves, he moves the whole bed. And he runs in his sleep and he just, he needs a lot of space so he gets the whole family room to himself. And yes, he does take up the whole family room sometimes because he sprawls. If you could see him, if I sit on the blanket with him at night and I open this up, he's kind of funny because he'll circle, circle, circle and he shimmies his back end right into between my legs and he gets as close as he can. He misses occasionally, and I do get sat on. But yes, he's a lap dog. I, getting into the vet with him, it can take me a half an hour. Getting out of the vet can take me half an hour. I don't take him with me a lot of places just because of his size. Um, it is hard to get him in the car. It's hard on him because he can't lay down. He has to stand the entire ride. You know, he rides well, loves to go. It's just, I need something bigger one of my neighbors offered me the horse trailer. I was like, I was like, I don't think he'll make it in there. But why do I like them? I don't know, there's something about their personality that I don't find in another breed. I think they've got the most personality like a human that I've ever seen. I don't know. How do you not love something this huge? And now it's time for Tales from Dante's Dead. You gotta admit, this is a great day, isn't it? Yeah? On June 30th, the Dante's Den Foundation broke ground on a first of its kind facility in Mayaca City, Florida. All right, one, two, three. Woo! Hey! A project like this is not accomplished by one person alone. It's the collective ideas and the visions of many. We are all sharing the dream of creating heaven on earth for our beloved dogs. When it's complete, Dante's Den will provide a warm home and health care for dogs whose owners, for whatever the reason, can no longer care for them. Some residents will live out their lives on the 50-acre property, while others will be rehomed to new loving families. Over the years, each and every one of you have indulged me by listening to my dream. And today, your patience and understanding has paid off. Look around. Construction on Dante's Den has been going quickly since then. We caught up with builder Mike Carter six weeks later. Well, Marsha, yeah. everything's progressing <laughs> along nicely. It sure is. We have so buildings. We right? have the hospital up, and you can see they're getting ready to pour the what we call rake beams on the top. And then they'll be ready to set the roof trusses, which are setting right over here. So we're headed towards getting a roof on and getting it dried in. Oh, this is exciting. What building is this going to be right here? Uh, that's the adoption center, and it will uh, house the short-term uh, animals prior to being adopted. And there is a variety of space, and each, uh, each area has access to exterior porches and screened areas for exercise, lots of light into the interior of the building. That was one nice. thing uh, when we walked through that we, we so noticed that the, there's so much light it makes it happy. Absolutely. And of course, we're looking for stressless, so um, there's no cages. That's right. One of the most um, newest trends in the industry is, is no more chain link, no more enclosures, no more of that compound feel. It's all glass walls, very open, very bright, very calming for the animals and very inviting for the guests as well. There will be a state-of-the-art hospital on site, which will provide around-the-clock care to those that need it. But the dens themselves may be the most intriguing aspect of the project. This, Mike, is the exciting part of Dante's Den. I know it's your favorite. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Tell us about this building. Well, this is, uh, this is the first of five den buildings. Um, it's capable of housing um, up to 18 dogs at a time, uh, each with its own individual room. This is where long-term animals will be taken care of. 
great finishes, some cypress tongue and groove ceilings, a very homey atmosphere. Each dog's den is designed to replicate their home environment as closely as possible. Amenities include air conditioning and private screened in porches for the dogs, as well as television sets inside their rooms and a playground and pool outside. When the residents come here to live, this is when their, their owners can no longer take care of them for whatever reasons or when you think that your dog just may outlive you. Uh, Dante's Den is now the answer for so many of us that really don't have anybody to give our dogs to. Dante's Den will care for your dog the way you would if you could. Over the next few months, we will continue to bring you construction updates from Dante's Den and stories of the new residents once they move into their new homes next spring. The property is fantastic, and the next time you're here, the dogs will be here. That's it for this episode of Animal Outtakes. Did you like the show, Lou? Like it? Elephants are the coolest. I want one. If he's getting an elephant, I want one too. No one is getting an elephant. Aren't you just happy learning about them? What did you learn today? Well, I learned that an elephant's tusks are basically just teeth. Hey, what if he needed to have a tooth pulled? Yeah, they would be hard to pull out. Those tusks are stuck in there pretty good. Well, he could go to Alabama with a Tuscaloosa. Thank you, Groucho Marx, wherever you are. We hope you've enjoyed our elephant exploration and learned a little something about these gigantic creatures. Join us again next week for another outstanding animal adventure. We'll see you then. This is amazing. I, I just keep saying it's amazing. She's watching us. She knows we're not going to do her any harm. Her mom is standing here. And she's really loving these carrots, huh?